for me, I had to do four different live presentations of my work. And I had a committee member who liked to throw curveballs in the actual like live defense or whatever, just to kind of challenge me, you know? And so you will most likely have somebody like that who will ask you a pointed question that you didn't anticipate and you do not want to be in that moment. That is a level of embarrassment. I I don't know that I, I just, I can't imagine. What up, everyone? Welcome to episode 15 of the Grad Coach Podcast, where today we are going to be talking about why getting someone to write your project is a god awful idea. I'm your guy, Dr. E, as per usual, and I'm joined here once again by Dr. Amy Murdoch, one of our trusty expert coaches, here to help do what we do simplify, demystify, and take all the anxiety out of academia. Amy, glad to have you back. You ready to break down some of these bad choices for the people? Yes. Bad choices is my absolute favorite topic. But just to be clear, we are talking about bad choices in academia, yes? Yeah, you made me nervous. You got me a little nervous. We're good here. (laughs) All right. Okay, look. So that brings us on to the first topic that we're going to discuss today, which is that getting caught is a degree ender. Emphasis on the ending piece. And what we mean by this is, look, anyone offering to write your thesis for you or do your dissertation for you or do your project for you isn't someone who cares about you or cares about the decision you're making or the the effects of that decision that you're making for yourself. You're probably going to end up getting caught at some point. And when you do, it's not going to be a question of a slap on the wrist or a chapter rewrite or a telling off somewhere in an office. It will end the degree. This is arguably the worst kind of academic misconduct or or plagiarism charge that you could be faced with. And then that's just the end of everything that you were doing. So you might never get to to, to complete the degree at all. I mean, it's just a a bad idea all around, right, Amy? Yes, it's a terrible idea because what we're talking about is plagiarism. And plagiarism is like the cardinal son of higher education. And you will definitely get caught. Like you can fairly easily find someone to write your paper for you. There are companies out there, you pay a little money and they will write your entire paper for you. And then there's AI. So let's talk about AI for a moment, shall we? Amazing technology. It can do extraordinary things. It's a tool and it's not going anywhere, so we can't deny it. And I know you have opinions about the AI, Dr. E, but we'll save that for another podcast. I ain't saying um, nothing. Yeah, yeah. I know that's hard for you. But <laughs> yes, we'll we'll have a different podcast about that. But yes, I, I will say that, unfortunately, lately, how shall I put this? I see a lot of overuse of AI. And so here's the problem. If we have the advanced technology capable of generating a realistic photo of, I don't know, Elvis Presley gazing at a Victorian landscape, then we have the technology is capable of detecting itself. So I don't know what kind of plagiarism detector you guys have in the UK, but in the US, in my program anyway, we use turnitin.com. So with turnitin.com, you submit your papers through it, and then there's a certain acceptability of like 25%, let's say, is acceptable, but 35% is not you know, matching to what exists. Well, now there's AI detection on Turnitin.com. So we're just in a really unique period, I think, with this because it's it's still relatively new. And I think universities are still kind of trying to figure out like what the rules need to be around it. But there are some universities that are already developing these policies. So you need to know what those policies are. But, you know, I think the point is to use software to help you, but don't let it write your entire paper for you. So what are what are your thoughts on that, Dr. E? I mean, I'm with you and I feel like we're going to get into and out of the AI issue because it's a it's a hot topic. Uh, it's, yeah, it's in academia. Sure. It's going to be around for a minute. And I, I, it obviously it has intersections in this conversation about getting someone to write your project for you. Right. And that could mean getting something to write your project for you. And I've seen people try and do this before. So we're going to get into this conversation at numerous points the whole way through. And we will have a dedicated podcast on AI. One of the, the additional things is that even if we put the AI piece to the side, the thing that more often than not, we, we tend to kind of, I don't, and I don't know why we do it, but we, we sweep under the rug here is that most of the people who offer you these quote unquote services for like writing your thesis for you or helping you through the process by writing your thesis for you. Most of these people are, they're scammers. Like really, they're just out here to, to take 
whatever they could take from you. They're, they're exploiting your desperation more than anything else, taking your money and run it. That's really all this comes down to. And what you want to think about at this point is whether you're setting the bar for yourself with respect to your own work. I mean, you're paying real good money for an uncertain service with no security, a high likelihood of an embarrassing, if not catastrophic failure. And from someone who might not even be an expert in your field or even have the wherewithal to try to be an expert in your field. I mean, look, I had somebody who, who did this once. There was a client I was working with last year and we spoke and I walked him through what would be necessary in order to improve his work, right? And he was so, I don't know, overawed by what he felt was the workload, despite my assurances that obviously we do it together, right? Like we'd help him through the process. I'll, I'll explain every step of this uh, to him. I'm there at the end of an email whenever he wants, yada, 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 all of that stuff. But he was yeah. still, he just still thought it might just still be too much for me to do, right? So he disappears for a minute. And I know, like, Hello. when he's gone for that period of time, like, I know what you're doing right now. Like, you, you're trying to AI your way around this. All right, cool. No. So he goes and does that, hands it in, <laughs> people find out. He comes back with his tail oh. between his legs, hits me up for a meeting. He was like, yo, I need to apply to a different university. So, I mean, it's what I'm saying is that you're, you're doing this and running the wildest risks of the, of the most catastrophic failures. And in his particular case, it was with AI, but it was still through a service that told him that they would do it for him. And they used AI. You're paying for people that aren't experts, that don't know what they're talking about, that haven't had time in the field. But look, what gets me is that sometimes people, the people we talk to on a regular basis, they'll worry about whether or not they're good enough to complete a degree, right? They feel that, you know, we've talked about it a thousand times, but that imposter syndrome that haunts everybody all the time. And we even get asked about our expertise and whether or not we know enough to be able to help somebody through a project and what have you. But here comes some random service from some scammer somewhere offering you the imposter starter kit and suddenly you drop all of your standards like it doesn't matter anymore. And it's like, and you do this because what? It just seemed like it was too much effort or, or it took too long to finish the work or it required too much work. Whereas the truth is thousands of people pass their degrees every single day with less ability in more difficult circumstances than the ones that you're dealing with. I mean, we should not. We help them do it. I mean, they don't care, right? We care, we care, Amy, right? We do care. And I think the key word is help. We help. We don't do it for you. But I mean, I get it in the sense that it can be tempting because it's so easy to clickety click on AI or to hire somebody. And it's overwhelming and you have, you know, maybe a lot going on in your life. But as you said, like everybody has a lot going on in their lives. I have had clients who have every possible sort of crisis or life event happening while they're going through it. So you just have to to persist through and figure it out. And it's it's painful, but it's worth it in the end. Uh, but even if you did hire someone who did a fantastic job or found AI that did a fantastic job, anyway, the, the, AI, the AI that I've kind of played around with, it, it doesn't have much of a personality in its tone. It's it, the, the words, the writing might be flawless, but it's flat. And I'm sure this is going to change and I'm sure it's evolving even as we speak. But as it is right now, anyway, maybe it can mimic like a famous person's voice or a famous person's style of writing, not yours or mine, you know, and, and you do have voice. So I love talking about this, that we all have a style in our writing of voice. Even if you're not aware of it, you do. You're writing these emails to your chair, to your committee. They read them. They they do know your capacity to write. They do know your style of writing, your tone, and your voice. And so you're writing these emails, they're reading your emails, and then all of a sudden you send a paper that's just curiously flawless. It's going to be so obvious to them that you didn't write it. And it is obvious. And this happens a lot. And I'm like, oh, she didn't write that, you know. And 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 thank goodness it is not our job to police that. But That's not a responsibility. We make fun of it. <laughs> well, I mean, but there's there's no hiding it, you know, is right. is the point. The number of times people do this, whether it's with AI or otherwise, right? It's what you're the point that you're making about having a voice is true for everybody who who writes. And even if it is a scammer, right? So if it's not AI, if it's a scammer or a scammer using AI or whatever it is, but if it's somebody other than you and you've been holding your voice up to a certain point, this individual comes in or you bring this individual in to write on your behalf on the assumption that they don't have their own voice soon, like nobody else will be able to tell the difference. And they can. It's the most absurd thing in the world. I've seen people hand me work before and I can see and I'm like, yo, my like, how silly do you think I am? But okay, so look, having said all of that, there is another reason why this is a really, really bad idea. There's more, there's more ammunition here for us to get to. And that other reason is that you can fake it. You can. Just not forever. 
So look, what I mean by this is that the truth is that between what we were saying on AI, the the amount of past papers and, and published papers that you can go through, the online quote unquote services that are available, all of the tools that are available to you with access to the internet, yada, 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 that you can find your way to. The fact of the matter is that it is actually absolutely possible to fake your project or your dissertation or whatever it is, your thesis or, or whatever you have, happen to be writing. You just can't do it very well or for very long. <laughs> the problem is there. It's not whether or not you can. You absolutely can. It's just whether or not you could do it well or for, for that long. That's that's the issue, really. I mean, you're still going to have to understand what's been produced in your own name because you're still going to be asked about it in every meeting with your supervisors, professors or otherwise and every conversation that you have with your friends and family or what have you. Everyone's going to be asking you about what you're doing and you've got to kind of somehow be able to have a response for this. I mean, the truth will always bear out, right, Amy? And, and you're right. It is exactly like that. When you have AI write your entire paper for you it's and bad. you submit it, it's like, oh, no, no, it's obvious. I'm so sorry. But yes, yeah, definitely something to keep in mind. It is the embarrassment factor in this. You don't want to be embarrassed that moment. Like for me, I had to do four different live presentations of my work. And I always had a, I had a committee member who liked to throw curveballs in the actual live defense or whatever just to kind of challenge me you know did, and so you will most likely have somebody like that who will ask you a question a pointed question that you didn't anticipate and you do not want to be in that moment where you are asked a question that you can't answer about your own work that is a level of embarrassment i, I don't know that i i just i can't imagine i mean can you imagine that dr e being in the moment and, and not being able to answer a question about a paper that you supposedly have spent months writing. I mean, listen, I'll be honest with you. It's just, it's not in my being to do it. It's never me, because my pride wouldn't allow it. Like just my pride yeah. alone just wouldn't permit me to hand in. It's worse than you think it is. You understand the depth of arrogance we're talking about here. It's got nothing to do with whether or not I feel like, like, you know, it's morally right or wrong or it's ethically correct or not. I care less. I just feel like whoever I'm paying to do this for me couldn't do it as well as me. It's just, just that's that. It's the sheer ego of it. Like, why would I like put forward less than my best foot? I'm him. Like, what are you doing? Why would I sell myself short? It's crazy. But look, I mean, I'm with you. In, even if even if it's it's not a question of like, you know, a presentation, like you were saying, and, and that, that scale of, of an event where you're going to, you know, show yourself up and it could be seriously embarrassing. That embarrassment that you could experience, we're not talking about a one-time thing. Like, this isn't, you, you get embarrassed once. You're getting embarrassed multiple times over. I mean, you're out here reliving the decision to fake your way to the degree that others with less ambition, less ability, fewer options actually completed. You'd be suffering some kind of weirdo Promethean fate, but without any of the foresight or the adoration. But no, in any case, I mean, look, even the idea of, of faking it till you make it means that you're, you're supposed to actually make it at some point somewhere along the line. I mean, this is just faking it till you fake it. Like you're never actually getting anywhere. You're just hoping you don't get found out over and over again. I mean, I'm, am I missing something? Or is there, is there some kind of like cheetah's nirvana out here? Is that is that just what it is? Okay, yes. Fake it till you make it. Doesn't mean you literally fake it. And you're right. You can only fake it for so long. But I, you know, I think at this level of advanced degrees, like you love education clearly if you're getting a master's or a PhD. You, you do. You love education. You love learning. So hiring someone or getting AI, you will not learn anything. And yes, it's a it's a steep learning curve, the the process, and it's painful, but it is it is worth it. And it's very gratifying to learn as you go. And then it's it's a learning that stays with you forever. You can apply it to the next paper. And you're if you're getting an advanced degree, you probably will have a next research paper. So you can't just fake it for the rest of your life in terms of writing research or at your job. So at some point you are going to have to learn the process. So you might as well do it now. I mean, I agree with you 100%. And when we have that AI conversation, I see you tempting me. When we have that AI conversation, I'm going to tell you why that will never happen. I keep coming like back why. to that. <laughs> I know. I know you're trying to tempt me into it. You know there's a rant in me about this, but I'm saving it for that podcast. Don't worry. That rant is coming. For those of you all watching who aren't subscribed, by the way, side note, what are you doing? Click subscribe. Like, what are we? why are we here? Subscribe so you can be here for the next time at least. But that aside, <laughs> the next podcast at some point, maybe not the next one, but at some point soon, we will talk about that AI issue and I'm, there will be a rant or two for that. But I agree. Here's my thing though. When we say that you, you can't fake this forever, I mean, maybe you can. 
Like maybe you can fake it forever. I want to be really pragmatic and really honest about this. Maybe you can maintain the life forever. Maybe you can fake this forever. Maybe that's something you can pull off. But it's not about the ethical problem. Like that's not the problem. It's not whether or not it's a, it's a moral issue. I know the university will harp on about academic ethics and it's called academic misconduct. So it feels like you're making a moral mistake. It's not even that. Like it doesn't get to that point. Like I joked around earlier on. I mean, for me, it's a pride issue. I would never let someone else do my work for me because I just feel like I can do it better. But then there's also putting aside the pride there's just the, 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 it just doesn't make sense. It's really that aspect of it. You're undercutting what you were trying to achieve in the first place, which we'll get to in a second. Anything else you want to add on this point? So, yeah, the question of ethics in academia, just, just, just a little bit, just elaborate a little bit on that, if you don't mind, in terms of this context of the ethics of hiring someone or using AI to write your entire paper for you. Okay. So you couple, said it wasn't a moral issue, but it's not. It? No, it's not okay. a moral issue. It's oh, here we go. Because, here we go. Okay, so look, I'll just I'll just say this really briefly. Seeing as you're trying to tease me mm -hmm. into a rant, I'm gonna give you mm -hmm. a tiny, <laughs> tiny little rant, and then we're gonna move on. But no, look, here's all it is: to say that it's a moral issue is disingenuous, and it's disingenuous because it ignores the fact that you and I both know that there's a dark side to academia. There's also a gray side to academia, and there's a lot of ambiguity between those shades. Like there's a whole spectrum of shades of what we can consider moral, ethical, or otherwise, and it goes in every direction. There's all kinds of weird things are going on and it's because academia is not we talk about it as if it's the shining city on a hill it's it's not like you know the ivory tower there's it's people it's human beings with all their prejudices and all their biases and all their confusions and all their uncertainties and, and all their failings and all what have you it's just people which means anything is possible anything can happen and you and i both know there are some people out there who produce way more than a human being can really produce in the, in the course of a year, which means I know you you reproduced you produced 50 articles this year, and I know you reproduced the first 10 40 times over. Not to mention the number of times we know academics who go out there and just steal all their students' research. We know this happens. And again, I'm not saying that this is everybody, and I'm not saying that this is something that like justifies anything. I'm not trying to justify anything. It's not moral relativism. What I'm saying is it's not moral at all. It's got nothing to do with that. It's not a moral question because it's disingenuous to raise the question in the first place, as if somehow a student bears a greater moral responsibility than their supervisor does or than their professor does, who cheated 15 times to get here in the first place. So there's, there's a whole disingenuousness in that conversation, a bunch of bad faith in the conversation about why it's ethically or morally wrong to, to plagiarize your work or have somebody write it for you. I just feel like it's a burden that I don't want to put on anybody's shoulders above and beyond the burdens they're already carrying. And what I mean is this, if you're out here thinking about having somebody write your work for you, it's not because you're, you're, you're a cheater inherently or you're morally wrong. It's because you're exhausted. It's because you're overwhelmed. It's because this looks too difficult for you. It's because there's a lot going on and you feel like you feel like maybe you can't do this. So you feel like at some point, out of sheer desperation, it's just easier to go this way than the other way. And all we're saying is it's actually not easier. Like it's not what you think it is. It doesn't work out the way you, you think it is. So I get why people do it. Like I understand it. But all we're saying here is that if you put aside the morals, given how overwhelmed you already are, you don't need to carry that additional burden. You put aside the moral question. It's not that. It's just that this doesn't make sense. If you are tired, this will not relieve you. This will make it worse. But we'll get to that in a second. When you when you talk about the pride that you have for what you accomplished, would you have that same level of pride if you had crossed the line and plagiarized? No, probably I have to not. Fake it. So no. that I, you know what I mean. So like I have my degree in a in a really nice frame on my wall, and this is definitely a point of pride in my career and in my life. This is something that I will always have. No one can ever take away from me. And I think about my process and all of the things I had to learn, all the things I had to go through. And I don't know if I would have that same level of pride if I had cheated, right? I mean, that is what we were talking about. We are cheating. Nirvana, cheaters, nirvana, or whatever, whatever you said. No, I'm with you. I'm with you a thousand percent. And and the idea of it being like a lifelong problem is 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 our third point, which is that your degree will be, if you, if you decide to cheat, your degree will end up being the lifelong reminder of the lie. That's really ultimately the problem. That's the the issue here. And it's the the final reason why somebody getting somebody to write your project is a really really bad idea. Is is this this issue of living or having to live with the lie forever and a day? Like this this will never go away. At least not from your own mind. You can convince everybody else, just not yourself. And it's not that you suffer imposter syndrome, you know, for a period of time, but that you adopt the role of the imposter and spend forever maintaining the fakery. I mean, it just doesn't seem like it's worth all the effort, does it? Not worth the effort. And what I tell my struggling clients is that. 
it is worth it in the end. It is worth all of the laborious pain of going through the learning curve. I mean, anything that's going to provide for you that level of satisfaction at the end, you have that satisfaction, you have that gratification and just that that amazing feeling of accomplishment because it was incredibly difficult to do, right? If it was easy, if you just threw some money at it and, and you know, would just pass along, that sense of accomplishment wouldn't be there. So it is worth it to go through the process as it's meant to be experienced. Couldn't agree with you more. I mean, it, it, it's, let's be clear again, this is about honesty and, and practical, pragmatic thinking. So let's just be really, really clear. Some of you guys out there are going to persist. You would have heard everything we've just said and you're going to persist and you're going to have somebody write your project for you. Some AI service is going to do it or some random scammer you found online who told you they can do your project in two weeks is going to do it and that didn't raise any kind of red flags for you. I don't know how it didn't, but still, some of you are still going to persist, right? And to those people, good luck. I mean, we know what you've done, but good luck. On the other hand, there are going to be some people who who see the value in the process, right? Who understand, like as you're saying, that the learning, the discovery, the understanding that comes from committed study, right? The you'll always know that if you decided to go the the kind of silly route here and have it done for you, you're just cutting yourself off from all of those benefits for the sakes of saving yourself a few hours of work. And it just it just doesn't seem like it's it's ultimately worth it. I mean, I've said this before and I'll say it again here, Amy, it's it's not the idea that good things come to those who wait, but the idea that good things come to those who endure. Right? I mean, I don't know how you feel about it. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, absolutely. Effort creates ability. But I also love that you say there's no no morality, but then you say, we know what you did. Okay, so maybe there's no morality, but there's judgment? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't say I wasn't going to judge you. I'm going to judge you. No, see, there's a difference between judging you morally and judging you for being stupid. Like, it's, it's a different thing. Like, okay, when I oh, ask you to... okay. See, okay. when I ask you to go make me a cup of tea and you spill it everywhere, that's not a moral mistake. You just spilled my tea. Like, yo, go clean it up now. Now you go clean it up. You see what I'm saying? It's oh, no. Not, I, I, I absolutely would not make a British person a cup of tea. I'm not doing that. It's worse than no you way. think it is. British and Arab. Like, this is tea on a level oh, you don't want right, to mess right, with. Right. No, it's different. This is different levels of tea over here. We don't play. I know. I know. I mean, now that we're there, actually, there's this Iraqi saying. My father used to say this to me growing up. But you, you do something in a rush, you're going to end up doing it twice. It's just this, 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 this idea that runs through everything that we know. You do something in a rush, you're going to end up doing it twice. You're better off taking your time and doing it correctly. Which is to say, avoiding the hard work, thinking that you're going to kind of hire someone to do this for you, or thinking that AI is just going to make your life easier, doing these things as a means of avoiding the hard work, it will not work. Ultimately, you're going to end up having to do the hard work twice. You're going to have somebody do it for you, and then you're going to have to read their voice, their words, their ideas, their thoughts, figure it out, and still explain it. You just did the same thing two times over. You didn't save yourself any struggle. You could have figured this out yourself, and then you've got all the confidence in the world to go ahead and either defend or deliver or speak about this to your family and friends and what have you for the rest of your days, hang it up on your wall like you were saying, Amy, or do whatever it is that you need to do. The work, the point is, is that, that the work that you're doing is the point. Like that's the whole point of the degree. The actual work itself is the point. That's where your degree sits. It's not the piece of paper that you got. It's not the prestige that you think that comes with the degree, whatever level of degree it is that you're doing. It's the work itself. It's the difference between the ego or the arrogance of like having a degree versus the understand versus the humility, forgive me, of of understanding the work that it took to get there. That's the difference. And it that is a lifelong thing. Like that you carry with you for the rest of your days. And that's that's what we're saying is, is the thing that you're trying to kind of either work towards or avoid, depending on which way you're looking at this. Love that. And I love that phrase that your dad said, if you rush, you will do it twice. Is that right? Yes, man. Yeah. Anything you do That's, in a rush, yeah. you're going to do twice. All right. So before I get into another rant or before we get too kind of like philosophical and, and, and uh, I don't know, cozy with this, I feel like we're entering into a whole new vibe. So before we, we drift off into somewhere else, I want to wrap this up. So what we're saying, ultimately speaking, is that there are three reasons, at least if not all the other things that we talked about, but there are three reasons at least why it's a terrible idea to have somebody or something complete your work for you. And they are that one, getting caught is a degree ender. Two, you can fake it, just not for long or very well. And three, you end up having to live with the lie. 
You know, put yourself in a position where this is just you for the rest of your days. And ultimately, the costs will outweigh the benefits. As we've said a thousand times, or at least as I've said a thousand times, this is not a moral problem. It's just stupid. Like, there's just no need for it. It's just unnecessary, particularly when there's so much help and support out there for you. So do the right thing. And if you're still stuck, hit us up. Like, what do you think we do on a regular basis? As soon as I sign off, what do you think we do? Look at, look at Amy over there. Look, all happy and what have you. You want to talk to Amy? Amy. In any case, look, thank you for joining me on another podcast episode. It was a pleasure to have you as ever. Thank you, Dr. E. My pleasure as well. Okay, so that wraps up today's episode. Remember, if you are looking for support so that you can get to the next stage without giving into temptation you can grab a free copy of our work smarter templates over in the grad coach blog and if you got value from this video do the thing like do the right thing start off doing the right thing hit the like hit the subscribe button do all of those things stay in touch check out all the other podcasts we're out here to help i'm only doing this for you you know what i mean help me help you let's do that help me help you <laughs>